side. Welcome again. We have seen how to work with the arithmetic operators. In this lesson, we will see more on expressions and arithmetic operations. And individual values and variables like 9 and x forms simple expressions. We can use operators to combine values and variables and form more complex expressions. For example, if I type value 1 is equal to int of input, please enter a number. That is input let us enter the value say for example 3 and then just copy and paste and change the value to value 2 Let us enter 5 and sum is equal to value 1 plus value 2. And if I print the value of sum using value 1. plus value 2 is equal to sum. So, value 1 plus value 2 is equal to 8. Here, the evolution takes place in different steps. So here the value 1, this statement prompts the user to enter some information and again value 2, this statement is similar to the first statement but we are changing value 1 to value 2 for different number. And finally, sum is equal to value 1 plus value 2. So, this is an assignment statement because sum contains the assignment operator is equal to. The variable sum appears to the left of the assignment operator. So, sum will receive a value when the statement executes that is value 1 plus value 2. To the right of the assignment operator is an arithmetic expression involving two variables and the addition operator. The expression is evaluated by adding together the values bound to the two variables value 1 and value 2. Once the addition expression's value has been determined, the value is assigned to the sum variable. The expression will be evaluated first that is value 1 plus value 2 and then the total value will be assigned to the variable sum and print will display the result. <coughs> G 
this statement prints the values of the three variables with some additional decoration to make the output clear about what it is showing. So here all the expressions have a value, value 1, value 2, sum. The process of determining the expression's value is called evaluation. So each individual value itself is an expression. For example, value 1. It is a variable whereas int typecasting of the string to an int and then getting the value from the user is nothing but an expression. So this is the second expression and sum is equal to value 1 plus value 2. This is the third expression. So the meaning is the process of determining the expression's value, value 1, value 2 and then value 1 plus value 2 is called the evaluation. So here we can see the commonly used arithmetic binary operators. Here x plus y if we consider the x and y as numbers, then x is added to y. If they are strings, x and y are concatenated to each other. Similarly, x minus y. y will be subtracted from x if they are numbers. x star y, x times y if x and y are numbers, x concatenated with itself y times if x is a string and y is an integer, y is concatenated with itself x times if y is a string and x is an integer. So in this expression x divided by y, x divided by y if x and y are numbers and x floor division y the floor of x divided by y if x and y are numbers x percentage y the remainder of x divided by y if x and y are numbers similarly x to the power of y x rise to y power if x and y are numbers so let us see these operations practically in our work. Here one thing to notice is floor division and percentage operators are not common arithmetic operators in everyday practice but they are very useful in programming. The floor division is called integer division and the percentage operator is the modulus or remainder operator. We have seen already about these operators. All these operators are classified as binary operators because they operate on two operands. For example, in the statement x is equal to y plus z, so here on the right side of the assignment operator is an addition expression y plus z. The two operands of the plus operator, this is the plus operator or y and z. So this is one operand and this is one operand.
the two operands the two operators plus and minus can be used as unary operators what is meant by a unary operator a unary operator has only one operand for example plus 4 so this is nothing but an unary operator similarly minus 5 so this is an example of unary operator with minus the minus unary operator expects a single numeric expression literal number variable or more complicated numeric expression within parentheses for example minus of 2 plus 4 so look at here the expression within the parentheses is evaluated first and then minus sign is assigned to that so this is equivalent to minus of 2 plus 4 is nothing but 6 6 it means it computes the additive inverse of its operand so this is the additive inverse of the operand if the operand is positive that is greater than 0 that is plus 4 in our case the result is a negative value of the same magnitude if the operand is negative if the operand is negative that is less than 0 the result is a positive value of the same magnitude and 0 is unaffected it means suppose if we have minus of if the operand is negative for example minus 4 then after the evaluation of this the result will come positive because minus into minus becomes positive similarly if the operand is positive say for example 3 then the result will be negative so that's what the definition if the operator is positive that is the greater than 0 the result is a negative value of the same magnitude that is 3 multiplied by minus which is equal to minus 3 if the operand is negative minus 4 that is less than 0 the result is a positive value of the same magnitude and 0 will be unaffected for example 0 and this will be unaffected okay whether it is in uh, minus 0 or plus 0 doesn't matter because 0 is nothing but 0 let us see how this works with a practical example for example x comma y semicolon g is equal to 3 comma minus 4 comma 0 Sorry. 7x comma y comma g is equal to 3 comma minus 4 comma 0 so here x takes the value 3 y takes the value minus 4 and z takes the value 0 suppose if we use the unary minus operator to inverse the expressions like x is equal to minus x and y is equal to minus y and g is equal to minus g 
and then if I print x comma y comma g then we get minus 3 4 0 means 3 is inverse to minus 3 and minus 4 is inverse to plus 4 and 0 is unaffected so you can see here because we have assigned minus operator minus unary negative operator to inverse the expression so earlier x is equal to plus 3 but now minus x been x has been assigned to the x itself so the expression has become inverse so plus 3 becomes minus 3 and minus 4 becomes uh, plus 4 because of minus into minus is equal to positive and 0 is unaffected suppose the following uh, statements for example print minus of 4 minus 5 to print plus 1 because 4 minus 5 is nothing but minus 1 minus into minus is nothing but plus 1 the unary plus operator is present only for completeness when applied to a numeric value variable or expression the resulting value is no different from the original value of its operand it means omitting the unary plus operator from the expression does not change its behavior for example if x is equal to plus x so what is the value of x here right now it is minus 3 so the behavior will not change for example if I press enter and if I print x once again still it is minus 3 all the arithmetic operators are subjected to the limitations of data type on which they operate for example if you consider the interactive sequences like 2.0 to the power of 10 it results 1024.0 suppose if we have 2.0 to the power of 100 so look at here there is a limitation to display the data suppose if we take the power of 2 with 1000 times or 10,000 times we may get an error because the result is too large the expression 2.0 to the power of 10,000 will not evaluate to the correct answer since the correct answer falls outside of the range of python's floating point values so hence it is necessary to know about the limitations of the arithmetic operations okay next when we apply the unary operators or the operators like plus minus and then multiplication division integer division modulus percentage or the exponentiation operators to the two integers the result is an integer for example print 25 divided by 4 or 4 divided by 
25 will print 6 and then 0 the integer operator division operator produces an integer result when used with the integers in the above case 25 divided by 4 is 6 with a remainder of 1 and in the second case 4 divided by 25 is 0 with the remainder of 4 since integers are whole numbers the integer division operator discards any fractional part of the answer so the process of discarding the fractional part of a number leaving only the whole number part is called truncation so integer division that is double forward slash is nothing but an integer division is used to truncate the division so please remember this very ca carefully truncation is nothing but rounding for example Thirteen, thirteen divided by five is nothing but two. The actual answer is two point six. Okay. If I use thirteen divided by five with the regular division, so here we got two point six. But when we use the truncation method with the integer division, we got 2. So this is nothing but normal division. So with the one forward slash, the double forward slash, it is nothing but integer division. Or truncation, okay. The method is nothing but truncation. The modulus operator as we know computes the remainder of integer division so instead of using the forward slash if we use the percentage operator percentage division operator we may get the different answer 1 and 4 so these are the remainders for 25 percentage 4 and 4 percentage 25 and the regular division operator that is single forward slash when we apply it to two integers will produce a floating point result And this is the normal result that is 13 divided by 5 with a single forward slash division operator. Will be the re result what we expect from the normal calculator. Okay, usually what we expect using the handheld calculator. And please remember that the floating point arithmetic always produces a floating point result. Okay. For example, print 2 plus, if I use floating point number, for example, 3.00 will result floating point value 5.0. We can cross check this with the integer values. So look at here. Floating find arithmetic operation always results 
floating point value. Ordinarily, a Python statement ends at the end of the source code line. A programmer may break off a very long line over two or more lines by using the backslash symbol at the end of an incomplete line. When the interpreter is processing a line that ends with a backslash, it automatically joins the line that follows. The interpreter thus sees a very long but complete Python statement. Here, we can proceed with the following example. 1 is equal to 1.0. Next, we have 1 tenth is equal to 1.0 divided by 10.0. Next, 0 is equal to 1 minus of 1 tenth minus of 1 tenth minus of 1 tenth next if I use the backward slash or backslash and if I press enter so look at here interpreter is looking for very long but complete python statement so it is waiting for the complete python statement let us proceed with one tenth minus of one tenth again minus of one tenth let us use one more back backslash it is waiting for the complete python statement let us subtract once again one tenth one tenth one tenth again backslash finally let us stop by using one tenth so when we stop the using the backslash the interpreter cursor came out of the complete python statement so this is how we can use the backslash to introduce a complete uh, python statement in our expression okay or in an interpreter let us print the result 1 is equal to 1 1 tenth is equal to 1 tenth The Python interpreter also automatically joins the long statements spread over multiple lines in the source code if it detects an opening parenthesis. Like, uh, so this is the opening parenthesis. A square bracket
or a curly brace okay so that means the interpreter automatically joins the long statement spread over multiple lines in the source code if it detects an opening parenthesis square bracket or curly brace and how it actually works is it waits for the closing parenthesis the closing square bracket or the closing curly brace so this is the meaning the python interpreter automatically joins long statements spread over multiple lines in the code if it detects the opening parenthesis or opening square bracket or opening curly brace so let us see this with the practical work x is equal to input then please enter an integer so look at here carefully i have used only two closed parentheses one for please enter a number and another for input if i press enter the interpreter will wait for the closeness of the opened parenthesis that is the first open parenthesis so let us enter the values Seven minus 2 plus 16 star 2 let's just enter the value 3 and then look at the result x is equal to 48 So here the evolution 7 minus 2 will take place first. Once we enter the integer value 3, and then this 3 string value will be converted into an integer value with the integer type casting. Then it will be added to 16. and then it is multiplied by 2 in the python interactive shell that is in an interpreter the interpreter keeps waiting until the user completes or otherwise types something that causes an error for example in the statement like this one if we replace 7 by y and if we enter the number 3 for example then interpreter will look for the value of y if it exists exists previously then it uses that value for example here y is nothing but if it does not find any value for example c it will throw an error because c is not defined so this this is the meaning in the python interactive shell the interpreter keeps waiting until the user completes or otherwise 
type something that causes an error so here we have a name error because c is not defined since computers represent floating point values internally in binary form if we choose a binary fractional power the mathematics will work out precisely so here we use one tenth and zero is nothing but one minus one tenth minus one tenth minus one tenth etc so this form will result in the output one is nothing but one point zero one tenth is nothing but zero point one and zero is nothing but some floating point number to the power of minus sixteen that is very very small value that is nearly equal to zero but when we do this using the math handheld calculator the actual result is zero so this is the meaning for this uh, binary fractional power that is e to the power of minus 16 in our case that is 0 is nothing but 1.38 something into e to the power of minus 16 the programmer may ask a question when we use floating point numbers instead of an integer values the quick answer is a good rule of thumb is this use integers to count things and use floating point numbers for quantities obtained from a measuring device as examples we can measure length with a ruler or a laser range finder we can measure volume with a graduated cylinder or a flow meter we can measure mass with a spring scale or triple beam balance in all of the these cases the accuracy of the measured quantity is limited by the accuracy of the measuring device and the competence of the person or a system performing the measurement so environmental factors such as temperature or air density can affect some measurements so in general the degree of inexactness of such measured quantities is far greater than that of the floating point values that represent them so despite their inexactness floating point numbers are used every day throughout the world to solve sophisticated scientific and engineering problems the limitations of floating point numbers are unavoidable since values with infinite characteristics cannot be represented in a finite way floating point numbers provide a good trade off of precision for practicality so we cannot avoid using the floating point numbers they are very important in scientific and engineering calculation so in scientific computations what the scientists do they always use the floating point numbers instead of the integers they also use integers but they give more priority for the floating point numbers suppose if we have a mixed type expressions means the expressions which may contain mixed integer and floating point elements for example we have seen already let us work it out here once again x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 10.2 for example and then sum is equal to x plus y
So here you can see that x is an integer and y is a floating point number. What type the expression is? That is x plus y. Except in the case of normal division operator, arithmetic expressions that involve only integers produce an integer result. All arithmetic operators applied to floating point numbers produce a floating point result. So here the arithmetic operation is applied on floating point numbers that is y is equal to 10.2. Hence it results the floating point value. Means when an operator has mixed operands, one operand an integer and the other one a floating point number. The interpreter treats the integer operand as floating point number. So here 4 will be treated as a floating point number. And performs the floating point arithmetic. That means 4.0 plus 10.2. It doesn't mean that the result will be changed to a floating point number. Whenever the interpreter prints or in a python script when we use the mixed type of numbers integer and floating point numbers the python interpreter will find the integer values and it will convert the integers into a floating point numbers if it detects any floating point numbers in the expression so this is the meaning interpreter will not change the result after evaluating into an floating point number, it initially converts the integer values into an floating point values and then performs the evaluation of the arithmetic operation. Okay. Arithmetic operation means it doesn't mean that only addition will be takes place. Arithmetic operations means it may be an addition, subtraction, multiplication or exponentiation. Hence here the x plus y is a nothing but a floating point expression after converting the integer value 4 to an floating point number 4.0. So we have already seen the operator precedence in our previous section. Let us see the two different terms used in operator precedence. When different operators appear in the same expression, the normal rule of arithmetic apply. All Python operators have a precedence and associativity. So let us talk about the precedence. When an expression contains two different kinds of operators, which should be applied first? So that is nothing but precedence. The next term is associativity. When an expression contains two operators with the same precedence, which should be applied first. For example, addition and subtraction. For example, as in normal arithmetic, multiplication and division in Python have equal importance and are performed before addition and subtraction. For example, in case of 2 plus 3 multiplied by 4, so multiplication will take place first and then it will be added to an integer value that is 2. Parenthesis, parenthesis in the expression has the highest priority than any other operator, means the expression 2 plus 3 and then multiplied by 4. Here, the expression inside the parenthesis will be evaluated first and then it will be multiplied with the integer value 4. Hence, 2 plus 3 is nothing but 5, 5 into 4 is nothing but 20. Or if we reverse the operation like, for example,
the result is same as 2 plus 3 multiplied by 4 so we no need to use the parenthesis here for the multiplication but it is better to use if we don't know what will happen for this expression so the recommendation is use parenthesis how exactly you want the mathematical expression to be evaluated the multiplicative operators like um, multiplication normal division floor division and percentage division have equal precedence with each other and the additive operators like binary plus and minus have equal precedence with each other the multiplicative operators have precedence over the additive operators so these operators multiplication normal division floor division and then percentage division modulus division are having the highest priority over the additive binary operators like plus and minus what can we say finally that is as in standard arithmetic a python programmer can use parenthesis to override the precedence rules and force addition to be performed before multiplication so if you want the addition to be performed before the multiplication or subtraction to be performed before the multiplication in an expression if it has the different uh, operands or expressions then use parenthesis so here we can see the different uh, operators and their associativity here the arity binarity or unity unary and the operators and their associativity in this table the operators in each row have the higher precedence than the operators below it and the operators within a row have the same precedence means here multiplication regular multiplication floor division percentage division have the same precedence and the associativity is left and the unary addition means unary plus and minus have the right associativity similarly exponentiation it has the right associativity and binary addition and subtraction have the left associativity and equal precedence and binary assignment operator has the right associativity the left associativity means going from left and right associativity means looking from the right or going from the right to see how associative works let us consider the expression 2 minus 3 minus 4 here the two operators are the same that is minus 3 minus and then minus means 2 minus 3 and then 3 minus 4 we know that minus they have the equal precedence what will happen will the subtraction of 3 minus 4 takes place first or the subtraction of 2 minus 3 takes place first
so here the two operators are the same minus and minus so they have equal precedence so here as I told you earlier in the table we have shown also when they have equal priority they have the left associativity so 2 minus 3 will take place first and the result will be subtracted okay 2 minus 3 will take place first and 4 will be subtracted from the result so it is equivalent to 2 minus 3 minus 4 and this expression is equivalent to 2 plus of minus 3 plus of minus 4 so look at here this is uh, these are the binary operators binary subtraction so here the moment when we use the minus with the <coughs> integer value followed by the parenthesis they became the unary operators minus 3 and minus 4 is nothing but here the minus is considered as an unary operator once again the result is same and if we use this kind of expression like 3 minus 4 look at the result the operation inside the parenthesis has taken place first and the result is here plus 3 so if you want 2 minus 3 minus 4 then avoid using this type of expression so use this type of expression 2 minus 3 and then minus 4 so this is the correct uh, interpretation that is using the parenthesis for 2 minus 3 and then subtracting 4 from this result is the correct interpretation and this is not the correct interpretation to get minus 5 so finally we can say that the subtraction operator is left associative and the evolution is left to right and this interpretation agrees with the standard arithmetic rules all binary operators except assignment are left associative assignment is nothing but equal having the equal symbol or left associative but the equal symbol has the right associativity so here you can see x is equal to 4 4 is in the right hand side so 4 the value will be added to x only if we enter the value at the right side of the assignment operator so as in the case of precedence we can use parenthesis to override the natural associativity within an expression so like here 3 minus 4 if you want 3 minus 4 to be executed first then use the parenthesis for this expression that is 3 minus 4 the unary operators have a higher precedence than the binary operators and the unary operators are right associative for example print minus 3 plus 2 will result minus 1 whereas
this results minus 5 so it is nothing but how we use the unary operators and how we use the binary operators differ from each other so this depends on how we use the mathematical operators in our expression the assignment operator is a different kind of operator from the arithmetic operators programmers use the assignment operator only to build assignment statements python does not allow the assignment operator to be part of a larger expression or part of another statement as such the notions of precedence and associativity do not apply in the extent of the assignment operator python does not however support a special kind of assignment statement called chained assignment so this is how it looks for example w is equal to x is equal to y is equal to z so it assigns the value of the rightmost variable so in this case that is g to all the other variables w x and y to its left so this type of chained assignment is helpful in order to initialize several variables simultaneously for example to initialize for example to initialize zero in one statement for multiple variables we can write sum is equal to count is equal to and start is equal to 0 so here sum count and start all will take the value 0 okay if we look at the value of count it is 0 if we look at the value of start it is 0 if we look at the value of sum it is also 0 but if we use different variables with the different values then all will take the respective values as in the chained assignment for example sum here is 0 whereas count is 1 so this is how the chained assignment works in python 